from LA Late News headquarters in Santa Monica. This is Mornings LA Late. It's a big morning of Mornings LA. Live from Santa Monica this Friday morning, we'll be going over your fourth a stimulus check update of 2021 with breaking news across the board. We'll be going over why that fourth stimulus check monthly stimulus checks may give you more checks. And then we'll go over the two path process and why it's getting incredibly great news. Then we'll turn to the third part as how they call the vote is more critical than when they call the vote. And we'll go over all the details about how they can still get you this check in the month of July. Then we'll be cutting to, to the extent we have time, this stimulus and the big money across the board that viewers continue to get, like Nisi, who got $22,000 from this channel. Viewers getting five, ten, dollars $15,000. It's your day for the big moolah. It's a big, beautiful morning. It's a Friday morning. The toast is toast and the butter is buttering. Let's get to the news, starting right here, right now, on Mornings at Light. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations. You made it to the week weekend. How are you? You made it to the weekend. I'm so excited for you. Fourth of July weekend. I will be here all weekend long recording in a full schedule of programming because there's a lot of breaking news. And you're going to see in this recording that Congress is not going away. They're all in session. They are all working next week. So I'll have all those details and I'm working as well. So hope you are having a beautiful day. How's the weather where you are? Jump in the live chat right now and tell me where you're tuning in from. And how's the weather? In this fourth stimulus check update of 2021 today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different because of scheduling. The broadcast of this video will be a little bit shorter, so we'll spend ex almost exclusively on fourth stimulus. I may not have time to cut to fifth stimulus or money for you. I'll cover that on noontime. But boy, we're going to go over the monthly checks, why there may be actually more checks. We'll be going over the two-path process, and that two-path process is getting really quite delicious as now, there's indications they may be giving you other monies for other subjects in the recon. OMG. And then we cut to the incredible two-path process going to a vote and why how they call the vote is more important than the day they call the vote. And this is LA, America's only 24-hour day, seven days a week financial news channel in America. Live in the morning like right now, this Friday morning, and taped in the afternoons. We'll have a full schedule of shows on afternoons LA new show, after evenings LA new show, and overnight's crypto tonight. Tonight. I don't know if noontime will be able to be new today or will be a replay. We'll see shortly based upon scheduling. And I do not believe that morning's crypto will air, but I'll try to put up uh, potentially a replay of last night's crypto show because the market is still going the same direction. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers, a YouTube record. I want you part of this channel. Hit that subscribe button. 400,000 subscribers in one year. Next stop, 1 million. Also, like this video. Every like helps. It delivers a free espresso. <laughs> At least that's what I hope it does. And consider becoming a member. Let's get into that monthly stimulus check that those Democrats want to give you and why there may actually be more months of checks. Oh boy, it's changing by the minute. Let's look at the House bill and the Senate proposal. The House bill and the Senate proposal is different by the number of checks and certainly the payouts. House bill from Jalapal, one year plus pandemic. Pandemic plus one year. We're coming back to that in a second. Senate proposal, July to December. So that's about six months of checks. The payouts, House bill, $1,000 a month. After the first month of 2000, a Senate amount monthly, unknown, but word on the street is it's this. Wow, now that's deliciousness. $2,000 a month over six months, $12,000 a person. Or $1,400 over six months, $8,400 a person. OMG. Now, there is a wrinkle, and this is where the breaking news is coming on in. Come on, breaking news. I'm excited for you. What do you got to reveal to me? Well, the breaking news is basically that pandemic plus one year, many thought no less than three or four days ago, may be considered over the pandemic for legislative purposes, and that the House bill may be reduced to just one year of checks, which would be $13,000, 12 months of checks. But here's the breaking news. One, Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, the head of Berkshire Hathaway, the economist of all economists said, the pandemic ain't over. 
number one. Number two, LA County this week said the pandemic ain't over. In fact, reversing its mask guidelines and now recommending individuals even vaccinated to wear a mask indoors because of the Delta variant. And number three, airlines are now suggesting that the pandemic may be not over to almost next year and that business travel is not even coming back at all. So if that's the case, well, then the House bill may give you more than 12 months of checks and more than $13,000 of checks. Let's compare that to the Senate. I think you have an opinion. A vote right now if you're in the live chat just after 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time this Friday morning. Vote House of Senate. House of Senate, tell me where you're tuning in from and where you how the weather is. You see how things change by the second? Wow. I mean, we just saw it just a few days ago. It's just going to be 13 checks from, 12 checks from the House and $13,000. Now it's totally different. So vote House of Senate. Tell me where you're tuning in from and how's the weather. Who gets this fourth stimulus check? You do. Democrats want you to have a fourth stimulus check if you got a third stimulus check. Single individual, 75000 or less. Democrats want you to have a forced stimulus check. Married couple, 150000 or less. Democrats want you to have a forced stimulus check. If you are a family of four, Democrats want you to have a forced stimulus check. Quadruple it. The family, the married couple, double it. And if you're on benefits, <laughs> yes, the Democrats want you to have a forced stimulus check. SSI, SSDI, Social Security, railroad benefits, veterans benefits, and away we go. The forced stimulus check is not income, so it's not taxable. The forced stimulus check is the same amount for everyone. So there you go. And the forced stimulus check comes monthly. It does not come in waves. So if you see the stimulus check at the 4th of July fireworks and you wave at the check, say, hey, check, yeah, check it out the fireworks. And the check don't wave back. <laughs> it's not a root check. It's just mesmerized by the fireworks. Hey, check, uh, uh, look at me. I'm, we're t I'm talking to you. We see each other. <clears throat> root check. It's not a root check. It just loves fireworks. <laughs> and there you go. The fourth stimulus check would come in the month of July for the month of July the Democrats represent in the month of August for the month of August. And they can still get the vote done and this month. And I'll go over all the details for you coming up in a second. But boy, here is what you need to know about fifth stimulus. Uh, to the extent that we have time in this recording, I'll cut to fifth stimulus later out of order. And I'll also cut to the big money across the board that viewers continue to get, like Nisi with $22,000, Art with three items, John with $12,000. If I don't have time to get to them, I'll get to them on afternoons. But let's go right into, without delay, the second part of your fourth stimulus update right now. And the exciting details details about the fourth stimulus part is that there's two wonderful things happening. The first one is identity. The second one is protection. And what's going on? Over three weeks ago, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer met with the president and said, Mr. President, there's too much money. It's too big. The recon. The recon has your stimulus checks in. It has climate. But at the time, it also had a lot of other stuff. And the president said, yeah, it's a little bit too big. So what did they do? A week ago last Wednesday, the president met with Schumer and Pelosi one more time and said, yeah, let's spin off two items out of the recon and take those two items off and put them in a spin-off TV series. What are we going to spin off? Roads and bridges. And what are we going to call it? A spin-off. We're going to call it Nash Bridges. You know, if Don Johnson, no, not that bridges, uh, bipartisan. <laughs> We're going to call it bipartisan. And that became the second path called Bipartisan Roads and Bridges. And suddenly, we had two paths as of a week ago last Wednesday. Your stuff in recon and all the roads and bridges in bipartisan. To recap, the bipartisan has roads and bridges, and your stuff is still where it was. In for stimulus, checks, climate, cares economy, money for children, money for seniors, money for medicine. Two wonderful things came out of this. In fact, we're now seeing that there's potentially three wonderful things that came out of this. And you're hearing it for the first time on this morning's broadcast. Number one, the first wonderful thing that came out of this was identity. Over the last three weeks, we had heard from naysayers. There's nothing in there for you and the American people. It's just money for roads and bridges. There's nothing for anyone. <laughs> well, ironically, there was 
tons of money for everyone. And in fact, there was more money for everyone in there than roads and bridges. But the fact that roads and bridges were in there was overshadowing. There was a lack of identity for your money. Now that your item, that the roads and bridges are out of the recon and in the bipartisan, suddenly the recon has identity. Your checks, the climate, the cares economy, the money for children, the money for seniors, the money for medicine, suddenly it has identity. And as if anyone could question the identity of what's in there, Mitch McConnell helped us. Because why? He started trash-talking the recon. It's just a democratic wish list. It's just progressive policies. It's just a lot of checks for people to stay at home and not do anything. It's just checks for people who don't need checks. It's just progressiveness out of, out of control. <laughs> Thank you, Mitch. You just explained to the American people what's in there. Uh, yeah, your, your tip is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> finally, the naysayers were silenced by Mitch McConnell, ironically, because finally, suddenly he had revealed to American people that the recon was always about your checks. It had roads and bridges in there, but now that the roads and bridges are out, then suddenly people understand that the recon was all your money. Now, why did this also help? This also helped for purposes of identity. This, excuse me, for purposes of protection. It helped for purposes of protection because over the weeks leading into the splitting of two paths, recon and bipartisan, Jalapal, progressives of the president, were continually talking about protecting the recon. What do you mean by protecting the recon? Protecting the progressive policies in the recon, they would say as well. What do you mean protecting them? What do we have to protect them from? Roads and bridges they were protecting them from. And uh, two weeks ago today, Jalapal issued this quote, and we didn't at the time know what it meant. I ran the quote because it sounded wonderful, but we really didn't know this magnitude and the, the implications of the quote. The quote was that Jalapal said that the president was applauding her and the progressives for protecting the progressive policies in the recon. Why does she need to protect the progressive policies? And then Brian Schatz, Democrat out of Hawaii, also that day said the president had thanked him, but because the president considers the progressive policies in the recon the priority, the president's own prior progressive priorities. Uh, but what did that mean? Now we know what it meant. Because the president's real focus was not on roads and bridges, folks. It was on this. There was roads and bridges in there to sell it to the American people. There was roads and bridges originally in the recon to sell it to the American people and to, to, uh, and to pitch it as a roads and bridges platform. But in fact, there was fortunes of checks in there for you and me. And that was really what was needing protection. That once roads and bridges was out of it, and down the river, and in the next zip code, and in the next town, that the fort of recon was protected. Now the fort of recon, F-O-R-T, is protected because the drawbridge is raised up. And the only people riding the recon are the Democrats. The only people putting stuff into the recon are the Democrats. The only people guiding the policies in there, the Democrats. And to make this even clear, the Democrats have said in the last 48 hours, that now the roads and bridges are out of the recon, that the progressives are piling as, in as much as they want to into the fourth stimulus recon. Now, let's step back a second. Remember that letter that I always hold up in the videos where I say seven House members and the subcommittee are writing your fourth stimulus recon? Yes. So the House Ways and Means Committee has, uh, is, the ta is the subcommittee in the House responsible for writing your stimulus checks. Recon. Your recon stimulus checks. They wrote your third stimulus recon checks. They claim they're writing your fourth stimulus recon checks. And guess what? They also claim they're writing your fifth stimulus recon checks, which would be for January 22 next year. Well, here's what you need to know. They're Democrats, and they're writing the recon. And guess what? The GOP has nothing to do with the recon. They have nothing to do with what's written in the recon. In fact, they don't want the recon to pass. It's only Democrats that are writing the recon. Can that get better than that? It can as now we have learned that the Progressive Caucus has repeatedly met with the White House every single day this week to assure the White House that they will be putting the progressives as much progressiveness, as many more progressive policies as they want into the recon. Now the roads and bridges are gone. What's going on here? This comes to the third revelation, which you're first hearing for the very first time on this morning's broadcast. Now that roads and bridges are out of the recon, it makes it easier to pass the recon among Democrats.
because the provisions in the recon are now, it's a smaller recon. It's a cheaper recon because roads and bridges, which is an expensive item, are out of the recon. And now that roads and bridges are out of the recon, guess what progressives are doing? Adding back in more progressive policies, checks for you than before. It's making naysayers infuriated. It's making Mitch McConnell furious. When Mitch McConnell's angry, it means you're winning. This is what Representative Elar Omar said, Democrat of Minnesota. We've had a commitment, us Democrat and progressives, that regardless of what happens with the bipartisan, we will do a, bi- we will do a recon that goes as far as us progressive Democrats wanted to go. That's, <laughs> do you hear that sound? Uh, uh, uh. That's a U-Haul truck backing up, folks. That is a U-Haul truck backing up, and the progressives are putting in as much progressive policies as they went in the recon. Because now the roads and bridges are out, it's easy to pass the recon. And with roads and bridges out, which was so expensive, now there's a lot of room to beef it back up with more progressive policies. It's not a question of whether there's stimulus in there. There's a question of how much stimulus is in there. Housing stimulus? Oh, yeah. Representative Richie Torres, Democrat of New York, says he has to have housing stimulus in there (laughs) as a progressive. I will tell you that I refuse to vote for any bill that fails to do exactly what I want with a larger recon. OMG. Now, that is incredible great news. Can we top that? We can. As a new quote, actually, a new op-ed from yesterday in a major publication. Op-ed means it's an opinion piece. It's not a factual piece. It's an opinion piece. Uh, has the title of the following, that Republicans should not sign the bipartisan deal. And what does the op-ed basically say? That the fact that the president convinced the the Republicans to take roads and bridges out of recon helped the president get his recon to the finish line. (sighs) Did the president set up the Republicans? Here's what you need to know. The higher the recon price tag was, this is the op-ed, the harder it was to pass the recon before. But by allowing Democrats to take out some of the spending and put it into the bipartisan roads and bridges, the overall price tag of the recon got smaller, obviously. In other words, the bipartisan deal, which (laughs) it's for Republicans to sign on to, made it easier so that the Democratic recon could pass. (sighs) Did they set up the Mitch and the GOP? Oh, darn them. (laughs) There is nothing that the Dem- that the GOP should bless for the recon because now that the recon is cheaper, it made it easier to pass it. <sighs> OMG, wow. Now let's go over. <laughs> let's go over the voting process because now you see how the voting process is so important in this equation. Uh, before I go into the voting process, I want to go over calendar with you. And that's why this is a shorter broadcast, one for scheduling, and also because I really want to condense everything just for this broadcast. I'll be back full with a full 40 minutes for you this afternoon. The calendar. I know you have a calendar in front of you. I know you're looking at the calendar, and you're looking at July 4th, and you've heard this. Over the last two months, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi have said a thousand times verbally, in writing, before press, that the final vote on the recon will be by July 4th. Obviously, the final vote is not happening for the recon by July 4th because today is July 2nd. But here's what you've learned from this channel in the last 24 hours, that the day they call the vote is not the issue. It's how they call the vote. Here is what I've taught you yesterday, that if they had called the vote on the recon today, for example, the recon would go one time for a vote and fail, and you would get nothing. And that would be a complete waste of time. Who wants to call the vote on July 2nd if it fails and gives you nothing? You want to call the vote when it passes to get you money. So don't be rushing to call the vote one day. That's the first thing. Second, don't also be saying they're dragging their feet because I'm going to show you in a second that they've been plotting this out brilliantly and that by plotting this out brilliantly, they're ensuring that they get it passed. They're not dragging their feet because they're not working. They're not dragging their feet because they're not doing anything. They're plotting things out. What we've seen over the series of quotes from the party members like Jalapal is that they have been plotting out the recon vote to go first for weeks. And now, since it's been divested from the bipartisan and it's a separate path, now they have it set up to go the way it needs to go. 
Here's a quote from Jalapal this last Monday, referring to something that we did not know was going on 10 days before last Monday. Jalapal says we Democrat progressives have an agenda to accomplish and linking, linking the two bills, bipartisan and recon together, is the only way to accomplishment. accomplish it. We did a poll of our progressive Democratic members 10 days ago. 10 days before Monday? And the overwhelming majority of the caucus said they're not going to vote for the bipartisan without the recon going for a vote first. 10 days ago, 10 days before Monday, the recon was not separated from the bipartisan. So it shows you how they've been plotting this out. Here's what you need to know, number one, is how they call the vote is more important than the day they call the vote. So they have to call the, the recon for a vote first. They can also call the recon at the same time as the bipartisan. They cannot call the recon for a vote after the bipartisan. It will fail. It will fail, and that will be it. It will be no more recon. Number two, they have to ensure that the recon has everything they need in that recon piled up. And as you saw early in this recording, the recon was initially your stimulus checks, cares economy, but money for seniors, money for adults, money for medicine, money for children's, money for house, money for other things. And now that the roads and bridges are out, they're backing up the truck and saying, let's pile more rec more money in there for you and me and the American people now that roads and bridges are out. So they're now beefing up the recon. Then calendar. Here's what's important to know is that they have to call the vote the right way because if they call the vote the wrong way, nothing gets passed. And the great news is that they're going to. Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi are the majority leader of the Senate and the Speaker of the House. Those are the two individuals who are solely responsible for determining what day they call the vote and what they call vote for and how they call the vote. It's under the Constitution. Chuck Schumer's already indicated he's not calling a vote on the bipartisan first. Mitch McConnell wants, it to, wants the bipartisan to be called for a vote first. Sure, so the recon dies, you don't get any money. Nancy Pelosi has also made very clear she's not calling the vote for the bipartisan first. And in fact, if you send her only the bipartisan, she's throwing it in the garbage. Yes, your villainous of 2020 is now your hero of 2021. There ain't going to be no bipartisan unless we get a recon and a recon bill to the House. She goes on to say, and yes, there won't be an, a bipartisan unless we have a recon, plain and simple. In fact, I use the word ain't. There ain't going to be a bipartisan unless we have a recon passed by the United States Senate. Done. So with that, we certainly look at the calendar. Here's what you need to know, is that the people responsible for the biggest parts of your recon finishing are the House Ways and Means Subcommittee and the House Budget Subcommittee. And here's what you need to know. They're not leaving town. They're working on Monday. They're working this Tuesday. They're working this Wednesday. If you were with me last year, there was a thing where I did this. Remember that? Hey, Fox News. Remember last year in July, Fox News loved to run the story that said, legislators are out of town from July to October, and they're back in their home state and they're not working. That's not true. Here's what you need to know, and I'm going to educate you so you can ex express it to other viewers if they jump at the live chat and don't know the answer. There's a difference of something in session versus in town. The House session and the Senate session can be in recess or can be in session, but that doesn't mean the legislators are out of town. Moreover, the House majority, the House Speaker of the House, and also the majority leader of the Senate can call them back into session at any time. The president also has authority to put them back into session. But again, that doesn't mean they're out of town. It just means they're not on the floor of the, of the, of the, of the building voting. So are they back in town? Yes. Are they, have, are they leaving town as of uh, today? Sure. Are they coming back on Monday? Yes, they are. The House Ways and Means Committee has already confirmed that they're meeting daily next week, that they're still talking to the president over the weekend. The House Budget Committee as well. Why is this incredibly great news? Because now for the first time ever, we're seeing that the House subcommittees are taking the lead on your stimulus drafting. In the last week, I said, you know, it's going to be the House subcommittee and the Senate subcommittees do it together. Well, now we know they're doing it still together. And they're still in session and they're working, uh, they're working around the clock. 
So there you go. In that ex uh, shortened broadcast, I will be back with you, at least at Afternoons LA, and certainly Evenings LA with new shows, but I might be back with you with either a new show or a replay at noontime. And with that, thank you for joining me on this shortened morning's broadcast. I'll have more details about what's unfolding coming up later today. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful morning. Always stay positive, always stay informed. Never go negative, never get confused. <laughs> and always bring the bacon and stay with Ally for more.